Do you have a mister setup and have no idea how to install and configure the software? Then this video is just for you as I will guide you through installing the mister FPGA software, how to set up your network, copying games to the mister, and configuring your controllers. After the video, you will be ready to start playing your games. If you want to see some guides on building different mister hardware setups, then check the description for some videos I created. Now let's get to the setup. Let's first talk about the things we need. We will need to download Mr. Fusion from its GitHub page. To write Mr. Fusion to an SD card, you will also need to download an SD card writer program. I personally use Etcher, but other recommended programs are Apple Pie Baker and Win32 Disk Imager. This guide will also need you to download the update all script because it provides some cool extras over the standard update script. Make sure you extract the update all script from its zip file after downloading. You also will need an SD card. The bigger the card is, the more games you can fit. A keyboard is also required for the initial setup. I use this wireless keyboard that connects through a 2.4 GHz USB dongle, but you can also use any USB keyboard. And of course, you will need a gamepad to actually start playing your games. If you plan on using Wi-Fi, then you will need a Wi-Fi dongle plugged to your Mr. FPGA setup. You also will need to do the same with Bluetooth. Optionally, you will want to also obtain an FTP program as an alternate way of copying games over the network. I mainly use WinSCP, but I've also had luck with FileZilla on my Mac and Linux machines. I provided links in the description to the hardware and software I used. Now let's write our SD card. Insert your SD card to the computer and open up your SD card image writer program. Here I'm using Etcher. I will first load up the Mr. Fusion SD card image in Etcher. Then choose the option to load my SD card. Then I'll click the flash button to write the image. Eventually you'll see these folder windows pop up. Just close them by clicking cancel or OK and the program will let you know when the SD card writing is done. For some reason, I keep getting these failed error messages. Actually, everything was fine with the SD card, so I'll just ignore it. Now let's copy the update all script to the SD card. But first, unplug and reinsert your SD card because after writing it, it will be unmounted from your computer. Then copy the update all script to the scripts folder on the SD card. Now that we have the SD card written with Mr. Fusion, insert it into your Mr. FPGA setup and boot it up. You will see your Mr. FPGA boot up with this screen and Mr. Fusion will start setting itself up. It says it will restart after it's done, but in my experience, it just turns itself off. So if you experience the same, just unplug and replug your Mr. after Mr. Fusion shuts down. Upon reboot, you'll be greeted to the empty Mr. menu. Now is a good time to plug in a keyboard. The next step is to set up networking. If you're connected to a wired network, then you'll be ready to go. However, if you have a compatible Wi-Fi adapter installed and want to use that instead, you need to run the Wi-Fi script. I'm using this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth combo adapter I obtained from Mr. Add-ons. To do this, hit escape on the keyboard. Select scripts. On this screen, you are warned about what can happen if you run a script that you aren't familiar with. I just select yes and don't ask again, so I don't get this message again. Now select the Wi-Fi script and hit enter. The script will start scanning for Wi-Fi networks. Use the keyboard to select your Wi-Fi network, then enter your password. And when you're done entering your password, your config will be saved. Press any key here and you will be taken back to the Mr. OS. If you look at this top bar here, you will eventually see a Wi-Fi signal confirming I'm connected to my network. I'll also change the background here because the default is really bad for video compression, especially on YouTube. You do that by hitting the F1 key until you find a background you like. Now it's time to update the mister to obtain all the cores we need. 
Go into the scripts folder again, and this time select and run update all. Just let it run on its own. The first run will take a long time, so you will want to do something else while it's updating. This run took me about 50 minutes, but it will all depend on your network speed. Once the update is done, the Mr. OS will reboot and you will now see folders for arcade, computer, console, other, and utility. For arcade, thanks to the Ypsilon's update all script, we have what we need. Computer lists all the computer cores. And for consoles, we have all the console cores. Other will show other miscellaneous cores. And utilities shows us some utilities to test different features of your Mr. FPGA. The next step is installing games to your SD card. You will have to provide your own games to copy. You can either copy games directly to an SD card plugged onto your computer, or you can copy them over the network to the Mr. FPGA. The easiest and simplest way is to just copy games to the SD card using your computer. When you open the SD card on your computer, you will see these directories. Go inside the games directory, and you will see all the folders where you can copy games to. We have folders for every console and computer available on Mr. If I want to copy Super NES ROMs, I'll take these Super NES ROMs that I have on this other folder and copy them to the Super NES directory on the SD card. And if I want to copy Game Boy ROMs, I'll take the Game Boy ROMs that I have in this directory and copy them to the Game Boy folder on the SD card. And keep doing the same to each console you want to copy ROMs to. Some cores will require BIOS ROMs, so make sure you have those too. Always refer to the course documentation to see what's needed. Now let me show you how to copy games over the network using FTP. The Mr. FPGA FTP server is enabled by default, so all you need is an FTP client on your computer. Now let's get the IP address of your Mr. FPGA. On this screen, hit the escape key on your keyboard and then hit the left key to get to here. Right here is your IP address. Now open up the FTP client on your computer and enter Mr. as the host name or IP address. For username, enter root and for password, enter the number one. If you get an error while logging in, then instead of entering Mr. as the host name or IP address, just enter the IP address I showed you how to get on your Mr. Once you're logged into your Mr., you can then navigate to the media folder then the FAT folder, then the GAMES folder. And you can copy the appropriate ROMs to each console and computer folder. Like before, copy Game Boy ROMs to the Game Boy folder, copy Super NES ROMs to the Super NES folder, and so on. Finally, let me show you how to copy ROMs using standard networking. You might think all you need to do is just run the Samba script, but that actually does not work, or at least it did not work for me. On the Mr. FPGA online documentation, it tells us what we need to do. Get on your Mr. FPGA with your keyboard and hit the F9 key on the main menu. You are taken to a login screen. Type root for login and the number one for password. Now type this command you see on screen. Make sure you hit enter after typing it. Then reboot the Mr. Now we can get on our computer to access the Mr. FPGA. Let me also show you how to get your IP address again, because you might need it. On this screen, hit the escape key on your keyboard, and then hit the left key to get to here. And right here is your IP address. Make a note of it. Now get on your computer and open up a folder. On this text box, type backslash backslash Mr. And hit enter. You will be asked for a username and password. If typing backslash backslash Mr. doesn't work, then you will want to type backslash backslash and your IP address. Type root for the username and the number one for password. You'll see a list of folders and you will want to open up the folder called SD card. And inside the SD card folder, you will want to open up the games folder and copy the appropriate ROMs to each console and computer folder. 
Just like with the other methods, copy Game Boy ROMs to the Game Boy folder. Copy Super NES ROMs to the Super NES folder. And so on and so on. So the last step before you can start playing games is to set up your gamepad. I'll show you how to set up a USB and Bluetooth gamepad. For USB, just plug in the gamepad to your Mr. Setup and you're ready to configure it. To set up a Bluetooth controller, you will need to pair it. To do this, you will need a Bluetooth adapter plugged into your Mr. FPGA setup. Set your controller to pairing mode, then either hit F11 on your keyboard or hold down the user button on your Mr. Setup. When the scanning starts, just wait until the Mr. detects your controller and pairs it automatically. When done, hit finish. You can also pair Bluetooth mice and keyboards this way. Now to configure the controller. We need to first set up the gamepad for the main Mr. menu before it can work properly there. Hit escape on the keyboard until you reach this screen. Now select the Find Joystick buttons. On this screen, with the gamepad you want to configure, press right on its D-pad. Then press down. For this stick 1 test, if you have an analog stick, you will want to tilt it to the right. You can skip any part of this controller setup by hitting space on your keyboard or the user button on the Mr. I.O. board. My gamepad doesn't have any analog sticks, so I'll press the space bar. I'll do it again for stick 2. Now I can assign buttons displayed on this virtual gamepad to the ones on my controller. For example, here the R is flashing. If I press right on my gamepad, it will be assigned to that button on the virtual gamepad. I'll continue and assign each button to one on my gamepad. If you run out of buttons to assign, you can always hit the space bar to skip a button or action. After the virtual gamepad, you are asked to assign mouse actions to the controller. I skip all mouse actions because I use a real mouse when running cores. So I'll keep pressing space until I'm asked to assign a menu button. On the gamepad I'm using, all buttons have already been assigned. So I want to use a combination of buttons to bring up the Mr. menu. I'm going to assign the combination of select and right bumper. If I had an Xbox gamepad, I would have had the middle Xbox button available. So I would have used that to assign as the menu button but it's your choice to set it to any button you want or any combination of the buttons. The menu OK and menu back actions are only used in the Mr. Menu, so they won't conflict with game button actions. Assign them to the buttons you want. And now I'm asked again about stick one. I don't have analog sticks on this controller, so here I'll just hit the space bar until I'm taken back to the Mr. Menu. But if you have analog sticks, go ahead and map those. And I'm done. However, this only configures the gamepad for the Mr. Menu. You still need to configure the gamepad with every single core you want to use. Some gamepads are automatically configured, but some you'll have to manually set them up. You will also need to do this if you do not like the default mappings to a core with a controller. You can start using your gamepad now to navigate the menus. Okay, so let's run a core. I'll select console. And let's check out the Super NES core. Each core will have a menu like this one, where you can load ROMs or disk images. If you boot to a core that's completely black, just hit the button on your gamepad that you assign to the menu action. Or on your keyboard, hit F12. For computer cores, you might need to hit the Windows key and F12 at the same time instead, because some of those cores will need the use of the F12 key. Okay, when you are in this screen in any core, Hit the right button on your D-pad. Then select Define Super NES buttons. On other cores, it will be named slightly different, like Define SMS buttons, Define Game Boy buttons, and so on. Now when asked, press right on the gamepad you want to configure. Then follow the same steps as we did with the Mr. Controller configuration. Map whatever action you see on screen to a button on your gamepad. When done, you are asked to set up alternative buttons. I never use this, so just hit no. Always remember to hit save settings after making any configuration changes in a core. If not, then you'll have to replete the controller config 
or any settings changes you made when you reload the core. If you want to configure another controller, just repeat the same steps. Finally, we are now ready to play some games. Just load up any core that you copied games to, bring up its menu, and select the load option. And then select the game and start playing. When you want to switch cores, you can either bring up the cores menu, hit right on the gamepad, select core, and navigate to a new core. Another way to load a new core is to just reset. You can either hit the reset button on your Mr. FPGA, or you can also reboot straight from a core. Bring up the OSD menu, press right, now move down until you reach reboot. And hit the confirm button on your gamepad to boot back to the main Mr. menu. Also, if you hold down the button, the Mr. will do a cold reboot. That means the Mr. will restart just as if you turned it off and back on. And that's it, you can start enjoying playing games. I have other videos that guide you through other Mr. FPGA related subjects. I also have weekly videos regarding Mr. FPGA news, so check the description for the playlist. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.